This is the main event. Mark's podcast brought to you by Belly Up Unhinged Radio Network Sports. I am your first host, lifelong wrestling fan, former radio guy, and cat dad. I am Troy. And joining me today is the main event collector and figure hunting warrior. He is the WWE walking wrestling encyclopedia. He's the Batista to my Teddy Long. It's Greg Playa. What's up, Greg? Hey. <laughs> but you don't like that one? I didn't know what to say, honestly. I couldn't think of something snappy. <laughs> Give me what I want. <laughs> oh, man, that's so played out, man. I know. Did you hear why him talk about why he even did that? He said oh. he forgot his lines. <laughs> wow. The yeah, actor. He's, yeah, right. Well, he said, because he said he had something worked out with Triple H, and both of them were waiting on a cue from the other one, and neither one of them could remember the cue. <laughs> so uh, they just started, like, improvising back and forth and it just got to like they were shouting at each other and then batista was just like give me what i want <laughs> so he's like what whatever you want yeah right hey whatever it worked it's uh you know either you want to call it famous or infamous whatever it's uh everybody knows it now either way man yeah, it's definitely uh, <laughs> right uh we are talking about a show he was on but he was not a main focus i mean he was a part of a, you know, a match that I completely forgot about. But then I'm like, oh, yeah, this did have some play up to it. Uh, we were talking about WrestleMania 24. Which I'm going to be honest with you. It, it not, you know, before getting into, you know, ratings of the what we think of the whole show, whatever. I liked it overall. I thought it was a damn good rewatch. But it's not one of them that pops in my head when I think of, oh, man, that WrestleMania was awesome. You know what I mean? Yeah. It, I it yeah. I like it from emotional, sentimental reasons. But Oh, yeah, of course. And obviously there's one single match on this card that gets all the play, you know, for obvious reasons. But there are some pretty good matches on this card overall. I mean, there was only like two matches on this whole card. Well. I'll say one match and a, I will call the other one a match that weren't really good. The rest of them, I thought overall, this had some good stuff. I thought this was one of the better celebrity matches featured on a WrestleMania. Until it, recently, yes. Yeah, yeah. And I don't know, but before this, uh, when I'm thinking of like celebrity matches, uh, there was the LT match with Bam Bam. And we'll talk more about that when we get to the match with Floyd Mayweather. But, yeah, I, I'm excited to talk about this one. Uh, you know, there's actually a lot of news to get into. Some of it is <laughs> hilarious, especially the stuff surrounding TNA. But first, we're going to take this quick break to let you know that the main event marks is sponsored by Fanatics. Get all of your officially licensed sports gear with Fanatics at Fanatics.com. The link is down in the podcast description. When you go to check out, just let them know that the main event marks and burns sent you. We are also sponsored by Swift Lifestyles. Their clean energy drinks and focus enhancers, great tasting vitamins, and big brain nootropics that are made and shipped from the USA. So go to swiftlifestyles.com and use our special promo code main event marks, all one word, for 15% off your order. That is Main event marks, all one word, 15% off your order at swiftlifestyles.com. Also, I do want to direct you to our link tree. It is linktr.ee forward slash main event marks. There you can get links to all of our social media accounts on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, as well as all the links to wherever you can hear the podcast and our YouTube channel, as well as our two, count them, two merchandise stores on Redbubble and Bonfire. That is if you go to linktr.ee forward slash main event marks. That is the easiest place to find everywhere that you can hear us, watch us, and communicate with us. Speaking of our YouTube, there is new content being posted on there almost every single day, and we are growing by leaps and bounds on YouTube. We are very proud of the work that we do there, uh, not only with our regular 
wrestling podcast stuff, but every once in a while we'll cover current stuff here and there. We do have more video elements coming, and we also have Marks on Media as a whole playlist on there, which includes some talk about uh, Marks on TV, Marks on Movies, Marks on Games. More coming with the Marks on Games now that both Greg and I have WWE 2K22. So we're going to be doing more videos and more talks about that coming up. Uh, so more content, pal. If you go to youtube.com forward slash C forward slash main event marks podcast, that is youtube.com forward slash C forward slash main event marks podcast. But now we're going to take our first break on the other side. We're going to dive into all the news and notes from the spring of 2008 right after this. Follow the main event marks at facebook.com forward slash main event marks pod on Twitter at main event underscore marks and on Instagram at main event underscore marks and at main event collector. Get ready to rumble in your new main event marks merchandise. We've got t-shirts, hoodies, masks, hats, stickers, pins, and much more on our Redbubble store. That's maineventmarks.redbubble.com. You can also pick up some awesome clothing items with the latest updated show graphics on our Bonfire store. That's bonfire.com slash store slash main event marks. Support your favorite retro wrestling podcast and pick up some cool swag on our Bonfire Fire and Redbubble stores. That's main event marks dot redbubble dot com and bonfire dot com slash store slash main event marks. Hey gang, it's Commissioner Cooper of TSS Fantasy. We are the fantasy show of the people. Expert fantasy advice, free contests, leading expert medical and legal analysis, and most importantly, you. Interact with us on all social media platforms or check us out at tssfantasy.com. You can hear us on Spotify, Apple and Google Podcasts, iHeartRadio, and many more. Check out the fun today and be a part of the most interactive fantasy show around. TSS Fantasy, the fantasy show of the people. Marks are available wherever you get podcasts and on YouTube. Find all of our links on our link tree at linktr.ee forward slash main event marks. Yeah, hey, we're back. We're back. News and notes time here. ProWrestling.net is reporting that WWE Senior Vice President John Laurinaitis avoided speaking to most TNA wrestlers at the bar that everyone was hanging out at in Orlando. He was seen talking with Jeff Jarrett, but snubbed most TNA wrestlers except for one, Kevin Nash. The obvious speculation is that Laurinaitis tried to exchange pleasantries with Big Sexy due to political reasons. It's no secret that Nash is tight with Triple H and Shawn Michaels and has other friends in high places in WWE. I mean, or he could just like Kevin Nash. I Who doesn't? I heard he's a nice dude. Like, he's a pleasant guy to speak with, and he's charming as hell. Even people that hate him say he's charming. <laughs> hey, man, it's just business. Like, everyone goes straight to the money thing. Yeah. Oh, well. Don't sit here and be on some high horse. We all have, we all protect our money. Can't get mad right. for that. If you take that out, then he's a cool if dude, you right? Say, I mean, <laughs> if, you, if you don't say you're working for money, I don't care what you're doing. If you're, if, you know, there are actors that love their job. I mean, Robert Downey Jr. seems to love being an actor. And, you know, but you think he didn't try to get as much money as humanly possible out of Marvel? Like, get real. <laughs> but, yeah. This Might be a bad uh, example. I think they were more than willing to give him whatever the hell he wanted to stay on. You might want to pick oh, another yeah. example. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah. Uh, but I'm just saying, it's like it, it, his, his contract negotiations weren't, you know, I, I'm sure it wasn't like... Uh, Oh, well, I, I just love doing what I do. You know, you, you can pay me whatever you want, you know? <laughs> like, a guy like that comes with a, a price tag, and people can say whatever they want about Kevin Nash, but, I mean, if he's there, people care about it. I mean, he, he literally walked out to the ring and put up the two sweet sign at a GCW show, and they went viral. So, there you go. <laughs> his, his lines at places like WrestleCon are always, like, the longest, so there's that. Yeah. He's, he's an effing star, like no matter what anybody says. 
But I just like how this story instantly goes to, well, you know why Johnny Ace was, uh, you know, being nice to him is because, you know, he, he he's friends with Triple H and Shawn Michaels. So, uh, you know, Lauren Ice is sucking up to him. Like, <laughs> wow. I mean, even see with himself. Why not? Yeah. <laughs> Who gives a crap? I mean, oh, oh man. Yeah. I try not to think, you know, instantly go to that, but. Well, for oh. other thing, you know, sometimes you got to kiss ass in life, okay? That's just the way it is. If you can't accept that, then you're probably failing. Sometimes you got to kiss ass. Sometimes you got to oil some pecs. Oil some quads. How are you doing yeah. this? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, Everybody's story, kissing man. a little ass in life, and if you say you haven't, you're lying or you're broke. I don't want to hear right. it. Nothing wrong with it. Not judging. Can't judge if you yep. all do it. Whatever. <laughs> I want to preface this next story by saying I did not get this stuff from Dave Meltzer. None of these oh, stories. God. That's a good I lead mean, in. <laughs> I mean, he is involved in some of these stories, but I didn't get this from the Observer. Okay. I, I'm not saying that this is not second or third hand from the Observer. I'm just saying I didn't personally get it from there. So just prefacing that. That generally means it came from there, but go ahead. Right. The WWE officials who are in charge of planning out the Floyd Mayweather versus Big Show match are not optimistic about how it will turn out. The no holds barred anything goes stipulation was decided upon at the last minute as a way of covering for Mayweather's inexperience in the ring. Despite the fact that he's uh, he's training hard for the match, WWE is surprised with how slow Mayweather has been to pick up many of the basics of pro wrestling. To say WWE is nervous about the match would be an understatement. Triple H has been assigned the task of trying to save the match from being a disaster. He has been working closely with Mayweather and Big Show over the past few days, and the match will likely be heavily scripted. Yeah, I'm not buying any of that because he was damn good. Why would they be nervous about a damn pro boxer? The I only mean, two- he's one of the best ever. I hate saying that. I don't like him, but it'd be stupid to deny right. it. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm not buying it. Nervous the two about things- it. Maybe the nervous two- that people are going to cheer him more than Big Show? Maybe? I, I don't know. He was heavily hated I don't even think at the time. So. Huh? He was heavily hated, so I don't know. Generally by wrestling fans, yeah, but a lot of boxing fans. Dude, he's got the biggest buy rates in boxing history, so oh, yeah, the people, people that hate him are more vocal than the people that like him, but he is loved, trust me. Um, I Yeah, I, I think it's one of those like uh, to be said about like, I mean, Ric Flair was hated back in the day, and people would be like, well, I'm going to buy this pay-per-view to see him lose, you know, and stuff like that. And he, so Tully Blanchard used to say, he's like, you know what? You know, you boo me, you cheer me, you paid your money, didn't you? You want to see me get my ass kicked or kick some ass? Either way, thank you for coming. Yep. So, <laughs> the, well, the two things I believe about the story, the first one about the no holds barred stipulation being to kind of cover up his inexperience. I, I get totally that. Believe, I totally believe that too, but I don't believe they threw it on the last minute. Yeah. I fully believe uh, that was going to be it all the way. Yeah. Uh, and, There's no way I think, this is going to be wrestling. Not to spoil anything, but look at the ending. Come on. Yeah. Well, and, and you got to make this somewhat realistic, man. I mean, I, I know Floyd was a great boxer and whatever, but I mean, seriously, when you put a guy, when, when you have that big of a size disparity, like, I mean, you got to get a little realistic with it at some point. There's a reason why they have weight classes. You know what I mean? Yeah, right. So. Uh, and but, remember, yeah. in boxing, they're, they're more strict about their weight classes than any other. Well, I guess the only other one would be MMA at this point, but they're a lot more strict right. with their weight classes. Yeah. Like a lot more. Well, and the second thing I buy about this story is the end where it says Triple H has been uh, tasked with, you know, kind of scripting out the match or whatever. Because, uh, I mean. Shock. Yeah, I mean, we can. People can say whatever they want, but I mean, you and I had talked before. Or I don't know if we did it on the podcast or not, but it's they pointed out that he was the one that helped Sean and Razor plan out their ladder match at uh, uh, which SummerSlam was that? 95. 96? 95? Yeah. So he helped plan that out with them because uh, they they weren't allowed to hit each other with the ladder. So he helped them figure out ways to work with the ladder without actually hitting each other with the ladder. And 
you know, so and and he's done a lot in NXT and everything else, and obviously his own matches. So I I totally believe that. That's like and I don't know uh, why that's a thing that that's being said in this as if it's a bad thing. Oh, it was so bad they had to go get Triple H to do it. Oh man. Oh, I, good grief! It's, to me, it almost sounds like they feel bad for Triple H. Like, well, he's the one tasked with you know trying to dig this one out of the gutter, and it's like I, I'm think I'm thinking he'd be okay with it. I, I might know. even say he probably volunteered for it or asked for it. Yeah, yes. right. I mean, that's kind of what I mean. Agents do this stuff all the freaking time, and he did a lot of agent work back then. So, I mean. I don't know how it's much like it is being now. in one of the main events, by the way, which is kind of funny. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, there was a lot of talk. I, I didn't have the story in here, but there was a lot of talk about this um, actually leading up to WrestleMania about a lot of people were saying it's like, well, that triple threat is going to be the main event. It's going to close the show. It's going to be the main event. That's it. And nope. There was I thought story. it was only because, you know, SmackDown still the scapegoat, except for now, right? As we speak, SmackDown's the show. But I thought right. it was I thought it was a safe bet. Yeah. Well, in the end, well, and Cena won the Rumble. So you'd think, yeah. you know, he'd main event. But the, uh, I, I guess. Plus it's uh, Orton and Triple H. I mean, it sells itself, dude. Like, why was, why, why, why doesn't that close? Right? Yeah. <laughs> right. And uh, I mean, in retrospect, I'm kind of glad it didn't. But we'll. Oh, talk I'm, not, about I'm gonna not. say in retrospect. I am really glad even at the time. I never wanted it yeah. to because obviously what we got was I thought was better than the WWE title match. Again, not to spoil anything, but yeah. Yeah, and we'll talk, and, and uh, I'll give my opinions when we actually get to the matches themselves. But yeah, I mean, there's there's a couple of reasons why, and there was a story post WrestleMania about you know why the switch was made, whatever. Because I guess that was the original plan, was to have that close a show, and then they what? supposedly, yeah, hashtag plans changed. <laughs> get the. Uh, Go get that shirt, people. Anyway. Red bubble. Yes. It, uh, and bo- or no bonfire. Our bonfire, bonfire store has it. Yes. I've got a couple stores. But here's another one here. I got, I got a, obviously I got a lot of leading up to WrestleMania stories in Orlando and WWE and whatnot. But at a press conference, Ric Flair said that if he loses his match at WrestleMania, he will never wrestle again under any circumstances. Flair also added that he may be a manager at some point, but he would never wrestle. Yeah, about well. that. Yeah. Uh, in, insert the uh, pr- impractical jokers meme where it's like, <laughs> say, say you'll never wrestle again. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's so stupid. Uh, and I wish he never would have wrestled again. I mean, I like the for those who saw so for those who saw it. I think you would agree with us. Yes. We wish right. you would again. Yeah, like every, even like TNA fans and Ric Flair fans, like every single person I've ever seen was like, "Dude, leave! What what happened to leave the memories alone, Rick? Like, damn, oh, man, that sucked." Yeah. I just I hate it when some of these guys try to hold on to former glory, especially when they have such a legacy. I think about yeah. him, Anderson Silva, you know, just people like that, like. Just stop, dude. You literally proven you're the best. Yeah, well, what you got really have me, nothing left to prove. Well, what got what got me on top of that was uh if you listen to any podcasts uh if you listen to any podcasts about um you know where people were talking about Ric Flair making his comeback in WWE uh WWE, Bruce Pritchard talked about he said they like had to damn near drag him kicking and screaming back into the ring because he said he he didn't think he had it anymore. He didn't want to wrestle again. He didn't want to embarrass himself, yada, yada, yada. And then he and he was great in WWE until he retired. And then he does go and embarrass himself in TNA. And he did so save him for money, though, to be fair. But yeah. Well, I liked him in the J.J. Dillon role with Fortune. But then he had to freaking wrestle. And I'm like, ah, dude, I, it really? And either way, uh, I got a couple of newspaper stories. One particular, I guess, I don't live in Orlando, but I'm going to assume this is the big paper they got in the area. A uh, story in the Orlando Sentinel notes that Orlando is already gearing up to bring WrestleMania back in 2011 or 2012. Mayor Buddy Dyer told the newspaper oh, that he 2016. 
or 17. Yeah. Whatever. Mm. <laughs> Wait, was was this the last one until... This was then? 24 and then 33, yeah. I thought they had another one bef- uh, before that. Yeah, one in Miami. Uh, 28 was in Miami. But... Oh, okay. Yeah, that might be what I'm thinking of then. Anyway, uh, Mayor Buddy Dyer told the newspaper that he'd like to bring the event back every two to four years. And I mean, that seems to be the uh, the plan. So I, they always do. Wrestling your forty is wide open. Well, yeah, because you're guaranteed no rain. Well, I guess last year they got rain, but almost yeah. guaranteed good weather. That was literally the first time in WrestleMania history they had like a they had a rain delay or any kind of weather delay. It was nuts. Uh, but the Orlando Sentinel also has an article up discussing Nipplegate in Orlando. How is that? This is the fact that all visible nipples had to be airbrushed out of WrestleMania billboards across the city. Mayor Buddy Dyer said, quote, apparently there's an ordinance that prohibits them from being displayed. It does seem a bit overboard, <laughs> end quote. Sorry, does that include males? Uh, Yes. Yeah. Well, that, that's what they were talking about, because there's a bunch of shirtless dudes, you know, on the posters. They had to airbrush their nipples off. Well, that's just that's just a Friday night for me. So what the hell? <laughs> right. So could they not uh, have public showings of uh, Batman and Robin down there or like what? Wow. You know, bat nipples. You brought that up. <laughs> hey, who doesn't fondly remember the bat nipples, man? Me. Even the toys, maybe, by the way. Maybe you maybe you find a better word than fondly. <laughs> yeah, uh, just like it, I had toys from those movies because I was, you know, I was a kid when they came out, and even the freaking toys had the nipples on them. I'm like, why? It's it's that a was Joel suit. Schumacher, dude. He thought it was, was cool. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, this is the same idiot that was like when he started doing the movies. He's like, why does everything have to be so dark? Oh, yeah, you know, heaven forbid Batman be dark. Yeah, well, that's what Michael Keaton said. That's when he quit. Because <laughs> he was like, when he asked, why does everything have to be so dark in this Batman movie? I was like, yeah, I'm not sticking around. <laughs> I'll say this, Batman Forever is tolerable, but man, man, it took a huge nosedive. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Well, at least he wasn't pulling out his Bat credit card. Never leave the cave without it. <sighs> See, now but, you got pissed. It's having a good time recording today. <laughs> well, hey, you know what? Uh, uh, Christopher Nolan picked it up. It's okay. It, it got better. Yeah, uh, it sticking... took a long time, man. But yeah, yeah, it did. Uh, sticking with the newspaper stories, the Orlando Sentinel had an uh, article on the family history of the McMahons. Vince declined to be interviewed for the story, so Linda spoke for the on the family's behalf. Other individuals interviewed for the story include uh, WWE Hall of Famer Jimmy Hart and Wrestling Observer Newsletter's Dave Meltzer. You you know where this is going. No, we're good. Uh, quote, God, he's such I a think, piece of crap. Yep. He said, quote, I think he's very, very self-centered and very paranoid. Meltzer said, quote, he thinks the whole world is out to get him. I don't think he really understands a lot of aspects of living in the real world. He literally lives in the world he created. It's a fictional world, but it's real to him. End quote. Pot, meat, kettle. (laughs) (sighs) Is he talking about Vince McMahon or himself? Yeah, I know. Like, fictional world, the the fictional world, the, the stuff he writes daily. I know. It's like you want to talk about somebody living in their own bullcrap and being paranoid that everybody's out to get them. Like, holy God. But you respond to Twitter trolls with two followers and you have to make a whole diatribe towards them about how you're right and they're wrong. Like, actually, God, he's such an effing more. Like, I usually don't get heated about Dave Meltzer stuff, but my God, he's such a, a turd. Yeah. Starting to see why Eric Bischoff gets so worked up. You ever see that <laughs> that that South Park with uh uh the guy the Facebook guy? I can't think of it. Mark Zuckerberg. Yeah. Where everybody everybody is like he's he's such a penis. <laughs> like, that's all I can that's all I can think of with Dave Meltzer. It's like oh Dave Meltzer's here. He's just 
He's such a penis. <sighs> well, getting off that, though. You know, he knows it all, and, you know, he's the expert on women's bodies. <laughs> oh, God, yeah. Well, men's bodies, too, you know, because if, if they're a little too bulky, you know, or he'll, he'll either talk about how they're, they're out of shape or, uh, well, they're clearly on steroids. You know, because nobody can just, you know, work really hard and achieve that, right? You know what's funny, too? Like, you know, all the crap you can talk about that man. You always said he's really well built. I don't want to pay him that compliment anymore. Yeah, well, yeah, he's really well built. It's like, okay, so are you on roids? Didn't uh, didn't Bischoff kind of insinuate that? He's like, I don't know what he puts in his body to make himself look like that. (laughs) Yep. Good grief. He wasn't going to use roids. The plans changed. <laughs> wow. Uh, WrestleMania 24 holds the record for the biggest gate for a wrestling event in North America, bringing in $5.7 million in ticket sales. The only wrestling shows in history to earn more from tickets were two New Japan Pro Wrestling shows at the Tokyo Dome in the 90s. Yeah, I'm sure they're really worried about Mayweather at this point. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, uh, well, you know, I'm I'm sure uh like I said, I didn't get this from the observer, but I'm sure, you know, Dave Meltzer was tooting that from. horn. <laughs> I'm well, I'm sure Dave Meltzer was ringing that bell. Well, it, WWE still didn't outdraw the Tokyo Dome. <laughs> oh god. Oh. Here's a speculative story. I don't know where it came from, but it seems I do interesting. I want to point out by the way that more people will flock to WrestleMania than will to the Tokyo Dome. It's mostly Japanese yeah. people. So there's something to be said right. for that, Dave. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, there's something a little impressive to say about that because it's like the, I mean, Japan's an island for anybody that, you know, doesn't freaking pay attention. But Japan's yeah, an if you island. Don't know, so, uh, if you don't know geology. <laughs> yeah, right. But it's like, so everybody from the island flocks to that one venue in Tokyo for that for that show so i i mean that's kind of cool I'm definitely yeah, not putting uh, it down i'm just saying you know you get more outsiders right. like the uh the evil vince show right yeah i mean because uh there was something i was reading where people were saying it's like more than half of the people at this show are not going to be from the city so right. uh, that's just kind of the way it goes uh but yeah okay, this story is just be successful and shut the hell up and just like his favorite <laughs> I, I w- <sighs> well, well, actually, I was told by uh, uh, by somebody at the front gate who had a clicker with them while they were mopping the floors. <laughs> he would, and he would take that like word for word too. That's the sad part. Yep, I know. Well, uh, an inside source told me this is a speculative story, but it sounds interesting, so I added it. So I don't know. Uh, a while ago, WWE had a storyline idea where Gary Hart, who passed away just last week, would form a heel stable called Black Friday Management with Umaga as the main star. The stable would have a criminal vibe. That would have been and, great. Right? Uh, the stable would have had a criminal vibe as Hart would be dressed with a mob-style business suit. Also, the plan was for him to be independent of WWE on television and he'd be presented as a recruiter of international talent for the company. They also wanted him to be accompanied by an Asian girl based on the Catholic schoolgirl assassin character in the movie Kill Bill. Uh, I never watched the movie, so I don't know what they're talking about. (laughs) I haven't either, but I'm just going to assume that's what Sir Ray is now. (laughs) Yeah, right. Uh, that, That... all sounds awesome, and it sticks with kind of what Gary Hart did his, most of his career. He mostly did the uh, like because he was with uh, he was with Muda, he was with Kabuki, uh, Abdullah the Butcher. I mean, like a bunch of international talent that you know didn't speak English. So that tracks. that have been a cool spin. And he'd been off TV for so long in 2008. I mean, that would have been a new uh, brand new introduction for him it totally Kinda went like, up but then I'm like a lot of people have been like who's this so, like who is that yeah, <laughs> yeah so I, mean, I would have it would have been like a brand new character yeah like um when uh, Paul Ellering popped back up with uh, the authors of pain a lot of people 
never saw him that were currently watching WWE. That was kind of cool. Say the same thing for WrestleMania 8. Many people didn't see him. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, Vince McMahon made a speech earlier in the week that nobody was to be seen with TNA talent. Robbie of the Highlanders was sent home. Uh, it can be assumed that this is his punishment for being at a live TNA broadcast. <laughs> yep. Look, that was that was one thing I always thought was like effing dirty as hell of TNA. I mean, yeah, it was stupid of Robbie to show up at the show. But then TNA like goes out of their way to show him on camera. I think they even said his name and from WWE. <laughs> I know they had a Chiron and everything for him, and and he had a look on his face like, "Oh crap!" Like was, then again, on the other side of the coin, you went. <laughs> yeah, it was, uh, like I said, it was you know that was stupid on his part for even going. But on the flip side, like, what did TNA hope to gain out of that? It's not even like a a big star. Like if, if Batista was in the about? crowd, I'm not even gonna God. joke. <laughs> But it's like if you had like Batista or John Cena in the crowd, all right, fine. But oh, you got one of the Highlanders. Cool. The guy who literally only shouts, I'm Robbie. Oh, God, I just thought that was so stupid. But Shut either way. Uh, Rey Mysterio has completed three surgeries on his torn bicep thus far. He's telling friends that two additional surgeries are required because he got an infection during the first procedure. Yikes. Yikes. Well, you know, Greg, Rey Mysterio's only been hurt, you know, like two times. So <laughs> Two times right here. <laughs> right. Like, man, he had to have, like... That's funny, he started the-, the whole Mayweather Big Show thing, too. So he was recently on TV. Yeah, well... <laughs> The thing with uh, this, it's like, you got to think, he. by the time this is all said and done, he he would go through five surgeries for one injury. That freaking sucks, dude. Well, I've only been wrestling, like, at this point, what, two decades, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, because he started, well, when did they say he started wrestling when he was, like, 14 or 15, some crap like yeah, that? Yeah, something like that, yeah. Freaking nuts. Uh, Jeff Hardy's home that burned down was not actually a house, but a triple wide trailer. Not a double uh, wide. Huh? He's got more than Heath. Yeah, right. Like, first of all, I remember that this thing. What, or was this a different time? Because I know his house burnt down at one. Yeah, point. I his don't know died. because I know the whole. Yeah, I know the whole premise of his and Matt's match. Us twenty five. The next year was that. Yeah. So, so was this a, just twice? Right. And my other oh, thing sucks. is, well, the other thing is, like, I mean, I don't know a lot about trailers, but I didn't know there was such a thing as a triple wide. <laughs> I didn't either. I honestly thought yeah. double wide was made up. <laughs> I, I, I knew double wide. Uh, it just means, you know, you got a bigger trailer, but it just, I don't know. I was like uh, living high on the hog, aren't you, with, with your old triple wide trailer? <laughs> Whatever, man. Of ground pool, man. All of it. Oh, hell oh. yeah. Like, Part of me kind of hopes it was this time. Because it happened twice, man. That hell of sucks. I know. It's like, man, you, I, can you just stay away from any kind of open flames? <laughs> but, uh, yeah. well, you, you know, you can't have the above ground pool, man. Because, you know, you spend all your money on the triple wide trailers. So, right. you know, you got. So uh, you, you just got to get one of them blow up ones from Walmart. <laughs> Uh, TNA has a, my God, I, I forgot this was the first TNA story I have. Uh, get ready for this. This is, yeah, this doesn't make them look Bush League at all. Uh, TNA has a truck going around Orlando telling people to watch TNA Impact Thursday nights on Spike TV. Oh my God. What kind of truck? I, uh, I don't know. I'm, I'm, part of me is hoping it's like a panel van (laughs) and they're like, Hey kids. Watch TNA Impact. (laughs) What the hell? (laughs) Uh, Furthermore, TNA has plans for the truck to be driven around the Citrus Bowl area later later on Sunday as well. TNA also has a special area set up right next to WWE Fan Access Center. Oh my god, that's pathetic. Yep. This is literally what indie feds, like local indie feds do. 
They show even, up outside and they hand out flyers. What's even more sad is this is in Orlando. You think like this would be their place where they don't need to advertise. Yeah. I, I assume they're trying to get like people from out of town to you know that are there for WrestleMania week or whatever, but like good lord. <laughs> <sighs> now, maybe, they impact, should, maybe they should get um get some of them banners or uh billboards put up you know where they airbrush the nipples and all that why is maybe that the don't. second time you mentioned that <laughs> this is just such a stupid story <laughs> what city has an ordinance well you uh, we cannot see any any form of nipple on a on a poster or a banner or whatever uh, saudi arabia maybe <laughs> I don't know. TNA Wrestling filed a complaint in the United States District Court of Texas seeking a declaratory order that Conan cannot pursue his complaint against the company. In his lawsuit filed against TNA, Conan is alleging negligence on the behalf of the company as well as racial discrimination in connection with the Conan gimmick. According to TNA's complaint, Conan agreed to accept responsibility for any injuries from wrestling with the company and agreed not to file any lawsuit for damages for uh, from working with the company. Good mm. Lord. Why is this the second company? Like, I Like, wasn't Conan involved in the racial discrimination stuff in WCW, too? I don't, I don't know. I think he was. So it's like, why? Is, is that just what he does everywhere he goes? He files racial discrimination lawsuits? I didn't know it was a thing amongst uh, Latinos. <laughs> yeah, I and like I'm you and I, this, I'm just saying. I normally I hear it from them. I usually it's like you know black folks, which well, is prevalent, unfortunately. But well, and you and I were talking about yeah, a lot of the stuff LAX did was kind of racist. But you know, we also talked about how Conan supposedly came up with a lot of that stuff. All right. So. You can't blame the company for letting you do it. You're supposed to stop me from doing stupid stuff. <laughs> right. Uh, the, I don't well, know. My if dad was Mexican. He never had a problem. I don't. <laughs> uh, and I, I don't know the stuff about the injuries. I, I really don't know what happened. came about with that or, you know, what's true and what's not. Um, I do know that TNA, uh, a lot of people like got mad at TNA about, you know, cause they, Supposedly agreed to pay uh, uh, Daf- Daphne's medical bills, and they didn't. And uh, supposedly they they were kind of negligent with her, and that's why she got such bad injuries while working there. So I don't know. And I think Bruce Pritchard was kind of backing that up too, saying it was kind of effed up the situation they put her in. But I don't know. Uh, either way. Speaking of well, what did Uncle Dave say? God, I'm, I'm sure he uh, he I mean, hates be- TNA, so he probably you know whatever anybody says is negative about TNA, he'll jump right on it. Well, I was there. Oh, I agree. Right, <laughs> uh, I was there across the country in San Jose. <laughs> Speaking of getting injured, though. Kurt Angle is now claiming that he has a summer date set up against former UFC champion Randy Couture for the Pro Submission League. Couture, however, is still under contract with UFC. I think he's about to come back, isn't he? I don't know. I don't remember when he finally gave it up. He finally gave it up uh, in April 2010 against George St. Pierre, or uh, at the George St. Pierre fight against Michita. Oh, uh, Okay. What the hell is Pro Submission League? Oh, just a grappling thing. Yeah, I've never heard of it before. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, this is a 100% true story, by the way. You and I. Oh, man, about- that's uh, another great lead in. <laughs> we talked about this on the Destination X show, actually. Uh, during the Shark Boy and Curry Man versus Team 3D Fish I'm, Market I'm listening. match. I'm listening. Hell yeah. <laughs> Is the fish market brawl match again at Destination X 2008? God. Oh, uh, oh, oh, well, not that one. Flash 2007, movies. yeah. Right. Uh, a lady about 10 rows back was hit right in the face with a flying in the frozen face. <laughs> With a flying frozen fish thrown by Brother Ray. Holy 
crap. You can't make that up. <laughs> nope. The security immediately attended uh, attended oh, to her. <laughs> they, they took her backstage and gave her ice. Oh, man. Well, well, as if that isn't enough, there was another flying fish incident courtesy of Brother Ray. A production assistant was trying to clean off Mike Tanay and Don West's broadcast table when another hmm. flying fish, again thrown by Ray, hit her right in the back of the head and she smashed her face into the table. Oh, oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> Why is this a thing? Twice. <laughs> Like by the same what? dude. Oh, how funny it happened! Blah blah blah. Twice. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh man! Oh my God! Two people were were smacked in the head by flying frozen fish by Brother Ray. It's just oh, God. I believe you already used the word bush league once in this pod for them saying it may have looked like that. <laughs> right. You want to double? You want to double down on that? <laughs> yeah, that's uh. <laughs> this is something I never thought I would say, by the way, but here we are. Oh, my God. <laughs> Speaking of Bush League, <laughs> uh, the National Wrestling Alliance announced that wow. uh, the... Ad- nice, trans- an- nice transition. <laughs> <laughs> they announced the addition of four-time World Heavyweight Champion Sid Vicious to its regular roster. Vicious released a statement saying, quote, I'm coming in to the NWA to show the world that this will be the greatest comeback in pro wrestling ever. End quote. Okay. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and say it doesn't happen. Uh, yeah, I, I don't, I don't know. Uh, NWA currently has a TV show on colors TV, which is dish network channel nine ninety four Oh seven. Wow. <laughs> I look high and low for that one. Right. Uh, it's called the show is totally called wrestling. Show doesn't look so bad. huh? Right. Uh, on April 2nd, it will be moved one hour ahead, starting at 8 p.m. Eastern. Oh my gosh. <sighs> Scott Hall has been uh, at a chemical dependency rehabilitation center in Georgia for the past several weeks. PWTorch.com reports that Hall checked himself out of the treatment in part because he wanted to attend the WrestleMania Hall of Fame ceremony in Florida. Uh, after just four days, he decided to check back in, realize, uh, apparently realizing that he was better off there until he is healthy. Oh. Yeah, it's kind of sad looking back on this now, but this was just like, unfortunately, this was like a common thing with him. Until he meets DDP. DD me. Yeah, I, you, you think about like, that was, it was cool, you know, that he got cleaned up. Booker T was talking about it. It's like, man, he he just he slipped and fell and broke his hip. And the next thing you know, he's gone. Man, it's freaking nuts. We didn't really get a chance to talk much about him on the podcast since he passed away. But, man, that was so unexpected. Yeah, you know, when I heard he was in the hospital with a hip injury, I was like, oh, no big deal. Old, a lot of old wrestlers are, right? Yeah, and he's like, six, he was what, 62, 63, something like that? Yeah, yeah so I, he wasn't that old, but at the same time, I mean, yeah. Especially when you've been wrestling as long as he had, you know. But yeah, and it wasn't even like, um, you know, because some of the stuff like like with Eddie Guerrero, like I, I don't know how much of that was genetic, but it's like after all he had put his, his body through, it's like, yeah, I mean, he cleaned up for many years. But sometimes that stuff just does so much damage to your body before you get yourself cleaned up that it comes back to haunt you. But with Hall, it wasn't substance related. He had a blood clot. It was sad. Uh, This isn't about the wrestler that passed away, but it's involving a family member of a wrestler that passed away. The 65-year-old mother of Hot Stuff Eddie Gilbert, who passed away in 1995, Peggy Gilbert, was arrested on domestic assault charges two Fridays before WrestleMania. An officer who spoke with the victim said, quote, she had been assaulted by her grandmother following a verbal dispute, end quote. Police arrested her and put her in the Henderson County Jail in Henderson, Kentucky. How oh, often do you... That's under... What the hell? <laughs> yeah, right? How often do you hear, I was assaulted by my grandmother? <laughs> 
Good <laughs> lord. Oh man. Brand that new family. one here, folks. Yeah, that family's all kind of messed up. Doug Gilbert is the one, his uh Eddie's brother, he's the one that like on national TV he said something to, about Jerry Lawler uh touching the little girls or whatever. Was that the alleged so. thing in nineteen ninety three that the, the girl recanted? Uh yeah, I think so. But yeah, he said that on national TV and it was like, oh my gosh, dude, like really? Like he wasn't anybody that anybody gave a damn about to begin with. And then he's going to say that. It's like, you really don't want a job, do you? He's got a job talking crap on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> right. I think there was something uh, that Cornette was talking about that, like he was talking about a Gilbert and Doug took exception. to. It wasn't even anything offensive. Like for some reason, Doug took exception. He, he was like, F you mother efforts. Like, it's not my fault that you were, you know, nobody gave a crap about you. <laughs> right. Uh, last story I got here, it's sort of wrestling related, but I just thought it was kind of funny. A trio of bank robbers being labeled by the press in Southern California as the WWF shotgun bandits were recently arrested in uh, Yorba Linda, wherever the hell Yorba that is. Linda, yeah. Okay. Uh, they robbed a couple of banks wearing luchador masks. Because so that's apparently- what WWE's known for, luchadors. <laughs> <laughs> I know it was like, why are they the and it wasn't even WWE, it was the WWF shotgun bandits. It's like, so pandas now wear uh, luchador masks like I'm confused all over here. Oh, God, but that does it for the news and newts. And uh, that brings us to our next break. When we come back, we're diving into WrestleMania 24 right after this. Follow the Main Event Marks at Facebook.com forward slash Main Event Marks Pod on Twitter at Main Event underscore Marks and on Instagram at Main Event underscore Marks and at Main Event Collector. This message is brought to you by Belly Up Sports. No, just kidding. This is not an NWO promo. This is just me, Kyle Sullivan, a.k.a. Shaggy Von Doom, the host of Here in Puckburg on the Belly Up Sports Podcast Network. I have a hockey podcast where we talk about hockey fandom, and the love of the game, and where that leads you in this, this game we call life. Why am I on Main Event Marks telling you about this? Well, what if I told you I had one half of the world's greatest tag team, otherwise known as the Main Event Marks, the one and only Greg, Superfly Greg. He was on, and he was talking about his love of the game. So you might want to come over and check that episode out. And if you like what you hear, you can check out the rest of our incredible episodes with our incredible hockey community from PHF athletes, ESPN personalities, fathers of NHL players, and a whole lot more. Come by, follow the show, give a like, give a subscribe, and it'd be great to have you here in Puckburg. But enough about me. Let's get back to what you're really here for, the main event marks, because they are the cream of the crop. Oh, yeah. Marks are available wherever you get podcasts and on YouTube. Find all of our links on our link tree at linktr.ee forward slash main event marks. And we are back. It's WWE WrestleMania 24. It took place March 30th, 2008. The tagline was the biggest WrestleMania under the sun. The venue was the Florida Citrus Bowl in Orlando, Florida. The attendance, 74,635, and the pay-per-view buy. (laughs) Well, actually, there was a janitor that told me it was more like 60,000, but, you know, whatever. (laughs) Uh, But anyway, the uh, buy rate, uh, the buys for this one were 1,058,000. This is the only WrestleMania uh, I ever did where it was like a group, group buy-in. I had, there was like me and like four other friends that all brought like 10 bucks and uh, chipped in and bought the pay-per-view together. But before the show aired, Kane won a 24-man interpromotional battle royal to win an ECW championship match against Chavo Guerrero later in the night. We will get to that. Uh, Don't blink. After, yeah, right. <laughs> 
After this, John Legend officially sh- uh, opens up the show with a rendition of America the Beautiful. And then we go into John Bradshaw Layfield, JBL, taking on Finley with your boy Hornswoggle in his corner. This is a Belfast brawl that went almost nine minutes. Hornswoggle got involved here and there. These two beat the absolute piss out of each other. In the end, JBL hits Finley with a kendo stick to the knee, a clothesline from hell, and that's all she wrote. Uncle Dave gave it two and a quarter stars. I gave it two and a half. I thought it was a pretty damn good opener. Let's say you. I actually gave it three. I love this. It was, it was damn it good. It was really good. Yeah. And, you know, we're reminded of the whole, uh, you know, was Hornswoggle really Mr. McMahon's son and all that stuff. You know, that whole storyline. <sighs> it's like Chris Benoit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. But we now go backstage with Kim Kardashian, who I forgot was ever freaking there for this. Who is uh, famous, by the way, for having a big ass in a sex tape. So there you go. <laughs> right. Uh, but she's talking about how the Money in the Bank ladder match works. I'll give her this. She can at least read a script. But there is no way in hell she cares about anything going on here. Uh, Mr. Kennedy then walks up, gets in her face, and says he's going to win two years in a row. When he's doing his promo, she's literally laughing. So (laughs) that was uh, good. That's why I laugh. I laugh at her when people talk about how she's famous. So there's that. (laughs) Right. Uh, But now we get the Money in the Bank ladder match. It is John Morrison versus Carlito versus Shelton Benjamin versus CM Punk versus Mr. Kennedy. Versus MVP versus Chris Jericho. I was looking at this whole list and I'm like, okay, Shelton Benjamin's still there. Carlito's been gone forever. Kennedy's, I don't know what the hell he's doing now. MVP's there again. And Morrison's gone now. And you got Punk and Jericho in AEW. <laughs> like, wow. Uh, big change within all these years. I believe but, Jeff Hardy is supposed to be in this, but he's dumbass got suspended like a month before or something like that. Oh, Lord. Yeah, they talked about that Matt, they were thinking about putting Matt in it, but, uh, well, we'll get to, I mean, he's involved, but uh, this goes about 15 minutes. In my opinion, Shelton Benjamin wins MVP for this match. Nothing new. Uh, th- <laughs> right. There are too many crazy spots to even mention. An MVP thinks he's got the match won, and everyone's down. Matt Hardy returns from injury after five months to hit the twist of fate off the ladder. In the end, Punk and Jericho are on top of the ladder fighting. Punk slips and pulls Jericho's leg through one of the rungs of the ladder to trap him so he can climb the ladder, grab the briefcase, and win. Uncle Dave gave it three and a quarter stars. I gave it three. What say you? Gave it three. Not the best way to make big match ever, but man, it was damn good. Oh, yeah. And I freaking blew when CM Punk won. I thought he was going to win the previous year when Kennedy won it. So I was like, oh, well, gets his win this year. Cool. And, and next year. Oh, that's right. He wins it. Yeah. Uh, who's he cash in against this time around? I forget. Was it Edge? This one right here is Edge, yeah. Okay. Uh, We now get introduced to the WWE Hall of Fame class of 2008. Howard Finkel announces them all from the ring as they come onto the stage. There's Jack and Jerry Briscoe, Gordon Sully's family, Rocky Johnson, High Chief Peter Maivia's wife and daughter, Eddie Graham's son, Mae Young, and Ric Flair's four children. We now go backstage with Todd Grisham, or who is it that called... The, did the promo with him where he said his name was Todd Pissum? Was, was uh, Cena? Cena? <laughs> uh, Todd Grisham standing by with Snoop Dogg says that he's having the time of his life tonight. Snoop says that he found someone who sees eye, he sees eye to eye with. It's Festus. Hey, what yeah, the hell uh, is this? This happened today. I'd be like, yeah, it's Riddle. <laughs> oh, God. Well, of course it would be Riddle. No oh, God, screw you. Riddle's one of the best wrestlers in all day of E. Screw you to hell bad, for that. 
I'm not saying it in a bad way. I'm saying like, of course it would be Riddle. Who else? <laughs> it's got to be him. The uh, biggest in, in stars, fact, man. In fact, I was thinking the other night. I was like, he should like. How did how did they not get a song from Snoop Dogg for him to come out to? Like, it just seems so obvious. He comes. That's like a remix of some, like one of the old NWA songs. So. Yeah, I know. And I actually like uh, I usually hate the mashups that they do for tag team, like, you know, throwing together tag teams. I actually like the one that they do for him and Randy. Like, that one sounds pretty sweet. It does flow pretty nice. Yeah, uh, it's a lot better than the one they had for RVD and Booker T. That one sucked. That's probably the worst one ever. <laughs> right. Uh, but Santino Morella now comes up and tells Snoop not to try any funny business tonight. Snoop Dogg then pulls out a ring bell and rings it so that Festus chases Santino off. What are you going to do with that bell? What are you going to do with that bell? (laughs) God, this is so stupid. I know. (laughs) When Todd asks Snoop how he got the bell, he says he knows someone and introduces Mick Foley, who has a Mr. Socko dressed like Snoop Dogg. (sighs) And then they go back and forth. I'm going to say what Foley says. Yeah, how... Uh, have a nice dizzle. Yep. <laughs> so effing stupid. Uh, but now we go to this. It's the interpromotional battle. It's Batista representing SmackDown versus Umaga representing Raw. Uh, it's Umaga. Yeah, I was going to say, I like the fact that Jerry Lawler actually points out because they said Umaga and he's like, uh, you know, William Regal calls him Umanga, you know, that or Umaga, whatever his name is. <laughs> <laughs> this one goes about seven minutes. I was shocked at how little time this one had because, I mean, Umaga was in one of the biggest matches of the previous year's WrestleMania. Batista is like one of the top guys in the company. She saw also was in one of the biggest matches of the previous WrestleMania. You know, <laughs> right. And in this one, they're in a throwaway seven minute match. Cool. Oh. Oh, no, it's not throwaway. It's brand supremacy. Yeah. Uh, Teddy Hart or Teddy Hart. God, <laughs> Teddy oh, Long. One, I believe. <laughs> Maybe either that or raising cats. One of the two. But Teddy Long. Either way, he's in hell. Okay. God. Uh, Teddy Long introduces Batista, and William Regal introduces Umaga. I forgot William Regal was the GM of Raw at this time. I was like, oh yeah. Uh, Umaga mostly destroys Batista for a good five and a half minutes. For some reason, when Batista makes his comeback, the crowd boos him. Uh, Batista ends up blocking the Samoan spike, dodges Umaga charging in the corner, hits a spine buster, and then falls while delivering the Batista bomb. But he still pins him and wins. Uncle Dave gave Batista him a star- up at WrestleMania. That's uh, nothing new. <laughs> Yeah, Uncle Dave gave this a star and a quarter. I gave it two. Let's say you. I gave it one. This sucked. Yeah, I was like, really? Like, this is this is it? Both these guys are good. I, I don't get it. We now go to Floyd Mayweather's trailer where he's hanging out and talking with his crew. JR and King then send the video to a, the tail of the tape between Mayweather and Big Show for later in the night. GM General Manager Armando Estrada is in the ring now and introduces the next match. I completely forgot he was the GM of ECW. So I'm being reminded of a lot of stuff here. He's ECW GM, by the way, not GM General Manager. (laughs) (laughs) Wait, what? You called him GM General Manager. Oh, God. That's generally what that means. (laughs) I, I can't word today. Do you even English, bro? <laughs> I guess not. Probably been hanging out with Riddle. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, that was but... like old Ohio. <laughs> uh, shh. Anyway. <laughs> Up next is uh, Chavo Guerrero defending the ECW championship against Kane in 11 seconds. Not minutes. Yeah. Seconds. <laughs> well, I would Kane... want to see this for 11 minutes anyways. <laughs> I was just like, really? Like, Chavo gets completely dunked on. <laughs> that just kind of showed that they... Yeah, not... man, what a way to bury that awesome title, too, dude. Yeah, but it's just it just goes to show they didn't give a damn about this brand. <laughs> they were looking to offload it. It's literally on its way out, I believe. Here before long. Mm. Oh, Christian's got to return first. 
but Kane ends up showing up behind Chavo. When Chavo turns around, he gets choke slammed and pinned. Uncle Dave didn't rate this. I gave it a dud because it wasn't really a match. I'll say you. Didn't rate it either. Yeah, it's uh, something. Hey, at least Kane got a win at WrestleMania. That's rare. <laughs> but next up, we get Raven Simone. In the uh, she's introduced in the ring, and she talks about the Make a Wish Foundation and all the stuff WWE does with it. It's somebody that actually cares, by the way. I just want to point that out. A celebrity, I mean. Yeah. Usually right. is there for a check, but I believe she actually works with them. So there you go. Oh yeah, right. We now get the uh, Leave the Memories Alone video for Ric Flair up next. Look, I'm man enough to admit I choked up. Again. But the match had an amazing build to it. I, I forgot about some of this. But, like, the whole old Yeller stuff was awesome. Like, just top to bottom, I loved it all. But after the video, we unfortunately go back to Mike Adamley backstage with Ric Flair. What the hell do you mean, Unfortunately. Yeah, uh, I forgot to take notes on what was said. It was, how do you feel tonight? Uh, I feel woo. And that was it. <laughs> That's about you, right. What the hell are you going to take notes on? <laughs> yeah. I I usually take notes on what was said, but obviously it didn't make that big of a, an impression on me if I didn't take any notes. So, Oh, it's Mike Adamley. So <laughs> God, just yeah. listening to your notes would have been botched. So don't worry. Yeah. Uh, Rich Fleer, uh, how are you doing tonight? Anyway. Uh, <laughs> let's wrap this up. I got to go uh, host Gladiators with Larry Zonka. Yeah, well, I, <laughs> hey, I heard uh, Matt uh, Matt Morgan's trying out for it about this time, so there you go. Yeah. But uh, up next, we get Shawn Michaels versus Rick Flair in the career-threatening match. It went 20 and a half minutes. Uh, the... For anybody that doesn't know, the reason it was career-threatening was Vince McMahon had told Ric Flair uh, a couple of months before this, I think, said, next time you lose a match, you're fired, or you have to retire, or whatever the hell. And so Ric Flair went on a winning streak, and then finally he said he wanted to challenge Shawn Michaels at WrestleMania, and it led to this. But after Ric slapped Shawn early on in the match, Sean slaps him back so hard that Rick bites his lip and he bleeds. It's not a Ric Flair match if some if he doesn't bleed, man. So hell no. Sean moonsaults outside and hits the announce table with his ribs connecting to the hard edge of the table. That I forgot this was the match that that happened in. That was sick. Uh, Sean couldn't bring himself to hit sweet chin music at the twelve minute mark, and Flair locks in the figure four instead. But HBK escapes. Sean hits Sweet Chin Music after the 15-minute mark, but Flair kicks out of a pin attempt. After Flair repeatedly chops Sean around the 19-minute mark, Sean hits a second Sweet Chin Music. Michaels crawls to the corner and looks conflicted as uh, Flair struggles to stand, telling Sean to bring it on. Michaels says, I'm sorry, I love you, before super kicking Flair's head off and then pinning him while hugging him for the three count. Uncle Dave gave this three and a half stars. I gave it four. Say you. I gave it four. It's it wasn't a perfect five star or anything like that, but oh my gosh, just it would have been in the Tokyo a, Dome. But. Oh well, of course, it would have been like seven stars in the Tokyo Dome. <laughs> All the stars, but just like the match itself was great, even without all the stuff to it, but. You factor in, like, just the emotion and the storyline and everything. It was so freaking great. Just all of it. Like, this is one of them kind of matches where it's like, man, just shoot it into my veins. It was, like, (laughs) freaking great. Uh, But Shawn Michaels slides out of the ring. He looks so upset at what he had to do uh, while he walks to the back. And I didn't get this at the time. Like, I, I wasn't paying attention at the time. You know, I was... Like I said, I was hanging out with a group of friends, wasn't paying that close attention. But uh, looking back on it, it's like, you know, it it was cool. He's like, all right, I won. You know, I'm going to go to the back and give Flair all the time he wants without me standing around. So uh, Ric Flair cries as he stands to his feet in the ring, soaking in the applause from the crowd. His kids in the front row are all crying their eyes out as well. 
Rick goes over to hug and kiss them all before walking to the back, getting a standing ovation as he should have. But after this, we go backstage with Todd Grisham standing by with Edge. Edge says that he was at WrestleMania 6 in Toronto, Canada, and he was the biggest Hulkamaniac in all of Canada. And Hulk Hogan lost. Now tonight, he'll beat The Undertaker and crush some little kid's spirits like his were crushed back in 1991. <laughs> this was a great promo, man. I freaking love this. I'm like, wow, that was, that was good stuff. But I like how we go from that match that we just talked about to this. Well, you got to cool down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. oh, cool down, throw did. a bucket of water on, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, that's like how you had a raging bonfire and you just like just doused it. But Stoop Dog rides a uh, tricked out golf cart to the ring for the next match. When the girls are dancing around the ring, King says, I always thought this was what heaven would be like, Jr." And Jr. says, well, you'll probably never know, so don't get used to this. <laughs> I was so effed up. I'm, I'm like, damn. <sighs> he was good at that kind of stuff, though. Like, Jr. would always slide in those snide comments. It's like, whoa, dude. But uh, this next one, it's Maria and Ashley Massaro taking on Melina and Beth Phoenix with Santino Morella in their corner. It is a Playboy Bunny Mania Limber- Lumber Chill match. God, they went five you got minutes. got it all in there. Yeah, uh, gotta, gotta squeeze it in. Uh, I totally forgot Maria used to come out to with legs like that. Like, oh, yeah. I forgot most of her first run in WWE, to be honest with you. Snoop Dogg sits in a throne at ringside, which I thought was kind of funny. The lights ended up going out halfway through this one. <laughs> and the ring spotlight. Talk about a sign from God, huh? <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, and the ring spotlights had to light things up. Uh, I have a feeling that they were just telling him, go home. <laughs> Maria, Maria hits a... Uh, I hate to make this comparison, but... Uh, Maria hits a Rick Steiner-like bulldog off the middle rope, but Santino pulls her off the cover. Uh, Jerry Lawler leaves commentary and punches uh, Santino to knock him down. Beth Phoenix ends up hitting a fisherman buster on Maria for the win. Uncle Dave gave it a quarter of a star. I gave it a whole star. Let's see you. I gave it a whole star as well. Wanted to give it zero, but... <laughs> Yeah, I think I overrated it, but, you know, whatever. I was trying to be nice. <laughs> After the match, Santino stands over Maria and taunts her. Snoop Dogg then gets in and clotheslines him. He ends up rolling, uh, Santino, that is, ends up rolling out of the ring, and referees take him away. Snoop then kisses Maria in the ring before they leave with Ashley. I believe, like, I was thinking at this time, I'm like, they were playing up, you know, his, um, reality show that he had at this time i'm like he's married and he's like making out with some chick in the ring like all right i mean you do you man for the next match a marching band plays john cena's theme to bring him to the ring i honestly didn't like it probably his worst wrestlemania entrance yeah i i remember because i watched this one he had a couple marching bands playing with the ring didn't he there was another uh, one. Of, there was another one I'm forgetting. Yeah, I think there was another one. I can't remember now. I'd have to go back. Uh, but yeah, it. I always hated that. I don't know why they... Because I, I think they did it uh, before he switched to My Time Is Now, and I could be wrong. Either way, uh, I could only barely tell what they were playing, by the way. If, if not for the fact that John Cena was coming out, I would have never guessed that was the song they were playing. <laughs> But this is Randy Orton defending the WWE title in a triple threat match against John Cena and Triple H. It went about 14 minutes. Right off the bat, Orton blasts Triple H in the head with his WWE title. In the end, Triple H hits John Cena with a pedigree. Orton punts Triple H in the head and pins John Cena to win. Uncle Dave gave this three and a half stars. I gave it an even three. Let's say you. Three. It was really good. It was. Uh, it kind of forget wanted... the grand scheme of everything. Yeah, definitely. That that is very true as well. Uh, it was just. It was a really good match. Uh, I don't know if it would. 
like we talk about, you know, kind of glad it didn't close the show. It was just like, mm, I mean, it was, it was really good, but I mean, you're not going to get a crap match between, you know, out of these three. So it's kind of expected. And the rumor was WWE didn't want to put this on last because of Orton retaining the title. They thought it'd be kind of a flat ending, which I, I can agree with that. So I don't know. But uh, for the next match, the crowd boos the absolute hell out of Floyd Mayweather and his crew to the point where you could barely hear the music and the announcements while he was coming to the ring. Money rains from the sky while he enters as well. I don't know if you noticed this, but Nexus original Michael Tarver is actually right behind him during his entrance. No, I wasn't a that? boxer, I think. No, I didn't. But. Yeah. Because I'm looking, I'm like, wait a minute, is that? I'm like, holy crap, that's Michael Tarver. Like, nobody knows who you're, who I'm talking about. Uh, just look him up on Google. He was part of the Nexus for like, what, two weeks, maybe? <laughs> <laughs> uh, not very long. But. but this one is the biggest versus the best. It's the Big Show versus Floyd Money Mayweather in a no disqualification match that went just over 11 and a half minutes. Floyd did what he does best throughout most of this one run. However, on this occasion, usually hugs too though. Yeah, that's true. Uh, on this occasion, I don't really blame him. At one point, Floyd takes a break to drink from a chalice. Big show beats up the guy handing the chalice to Floyd. At one point after big show beats on Floyd for a while, Mayweather's crew says he's out, and they leave, or they go to leave anyway. Big Show chases him down, beats up Mayweather's bodyguards, and then drags Floyd back to the ring. <laughs> he actually hardways one of his uh, bodyguards, too, because at the end of the match, you see him bleeding. I'm like, damn. Uh, there's no way that dude cut himself. But either way, uh, Big Show beats up more bodyguards in the ring as Floyd gets a steel chair and beats the Big Show with it. Floyd then grabs brass knuckles that were being worn on a chain by one of his bodyguards, and he hits Big Show with a right haymaker, knocking him colder than a banker's heart. The ref counts to 10, and the Big Show doesn't get up, making Mayweather the winner. Uncle Dave and I both gave this three stars. What say you? I was on the fence between two and three. I gave it three. I was really entertained. It was really fun. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, uh, like I was saying, like this, this was, uh, the best celebrity, uh, match I'd seen since, uh, LT. I can't really think of any between then and this. So <laughs> this was really uh, well, good. Kevin Green matches in WCW were damn good. Oh, I'm talking like WrestleMania specifically, but, but yeah. Um, yeah, those were, you're right. Those those were really good. If you're including everything, yeah. This one I didn't really know what to expect going into it. I wasn't a Mayweather fan, so whatever. But then when the event came around, I was like, man, that was a lot better than I had even thought it was going to be. So I had to bump it up for you know subverting expectations. <laughs> but Kim Kardashian is introduced now in the ring and announces. Yes, we've now the- said her name twice on this podcast, by the way. Yeah, right. Uh, well, they got to get more Kim K on the on WrestleMania, man. <sighs> anyway, uh, she announces the record attendance of seventy four thousand six hundred thirty five. She gives everyone a round of applause and says, that's big. That's really big. I'm going to leave that obvious joke alone. <laughs> oh. Just let it hang. But we're going to take our second to last break here. When we come back, it is the main event time. Right after this. Follow the main event marks at facebook.com forward slash main event marks pod on Twitter at main event underscore marks and on Instagram at main event underscore marks and at main event collector. Hello, everyone. My name is Ryan McCarthy, and I'm the host of the No Credentials Required podcast. Start your work week with the Monday Drop-In, where I talk about the sports beat in the Capital District, also known as the Mighty 518, as well as Metro New York sports from an upstate point of view. I also give a life lesson from a weekly sports story, so you might learn something from that. I also have a midweek podcast where I interview different sports personalities and talk about a wide array of topics. 
Take a listen and subscribe on your preferred podcast app, including Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Spreaker, Google Podcasts, Amazon Music, and iHeartRadio. Also, check out our social media channels on Twitter and Instagram, BellyUpNCR, and Facebook.com forward slash BellyUpSportsNCR. We're a part of the Belly Up Sports Podcast Network in association with Godzilla Media. No credentials required, where you don't need a press pass to talk sports. Marks are available wherever you get podcasts and on YouTube. Find all of our links on our link tree at linktr.ee forward slash main event marks. And we're back. We're back. Now we're on to the main event. The Undertaker has some flamethrower cannons on either side of the stage. He's also wearing, he's basically wearing his WrestleMania 14 entrance gear minus the high collar. Uh, Edge has Vicky Guerrero wheeled onto the stage in her wheelchair by Teddy Long. He also gets a Cody Rhodes level of pyro. I don't know about you. I was a tad underwhelmed by the entrances of the main event of WrestleMania for this. Like, I like them. yeah, there was a lot of, I mean, they were fine. It just, I, I don't know. Maybe I got spoiled. Like the last few years, they've really like went way out with, uh, you know, trying to make the entrances different and special. Uh, but now, on to the main event, it is Edge defending the world's heavyweight title against The Undertaker in about 24 minutes. Near the end, the ref gets bumped, and referencing their Survivor Series match, Edge hits The Undertaker with a camera. He attempts a tombstone. The Undertaker reverses it and hits a tombstone of his own. Referee Charles Robinson hauls ass to the ring for a near fall. There is one in the street. I <laughs> know. I was like, damn, dude, he was booking it. Uh, but then Kurt Hawkins and Zack Ryder run down. The Undertaker knocks Hawkins off the apron and chokeslams Ryder onto him. This leads to an edge spear, but Undertaker kicks out. After a second spear, Undertaker locks in Hell's Gate, and Edge taps out. Uh, Uncle Dave gave this four and a quarter stars. I gave it three and a half. What say you? I gave it four. This was one of my yeah. all-time favorite matches at this moment at this point. I remember me and me and all my buddies were like losing it because we thought that Edge might actually do it. And we were like, no. So all of us were big Undertaker marks, obviously. So it, we, were, we were like, oh man. But this was a damn good match. And if you can make me believe like that, uh I I I gotta give you I gotta give the match more props for that. I, I like not knowing going into it who's going to win, you know, and I really thought the Edge could have done it. But Edge has blood coming from his mouth as the Undertaker celebrates with the World Heavyweight title. Undertaker does his pose, the lights drop, and pyro and fireworks go off everywhere to end the show. So and the fan gets hit by one, our... by the way, and becomes a big thing. True story. What? It... You said the sign gets hit by one? No, a fan gets hit by one of Undertaker's pyros. Oh, yeah, I remember. I think I remember hearing about that. That was, yeah, that's pretty scary. Uh, poor dude, or who, you know, whatever. We're going to take our final break of the podcast. When we come back, it's final ratings time, and we're going to tell you what's to come next week on the podcast. Follow the main event marks at facebook.com forward slash main event marks pod on Twitter at main event underscore marks and on Instagram at main event underscore marks and at main event collector. Hello, everyone. My name is Ryan McCarthy, and I'm the host of the No Credentials Required podcast. Start your work week with the Monday drop in where I talk about the sports beat in the capital district, also known as the Muddy 518, as well as Metro New York sports from an upstate point of view. I also give a life lesson from a weekly sports story, so you might learn something from that. I also have a midweek podcast where I interview different sports personalities and talk about a wide array of topics. Take a listen and subscribe on your preferred podcast app, including Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Spreaker, Google Podcasts, Amazon Music, and iHeartRadio. Also check out our social media channels on Twitter and Instagram, BellyUpNCR, and Facebook.com forward slash BellyUpSportsNCR. We're a part of the Belly Up Sports Podcast Network in association with Godzilla Media. No credentials required, where you don't need a press pass to talk sports. The event 
Marks are available wherever you get podcasts and on YouTube. Find all of our links on our link tree at linktr.ee forward slash main event marks. And we're back. We're back. Final rating this time. Internet Movie Database gave this 7.8 out of 10. Cagematch.net gave it 8.75 out of 10. I gave it 8.5 out of 10 for a B, B plus maybe. What say you? I give it a B plus. It's so a really good show. Maybe I think. Yeah, yeah, I know it gets buried. Um, you know, and like we, like I said, it's the one match that sticks out is Sean versus Flair, but the whole card, well, not the whole card, most of the card, <laughs> is pretty damn good. And the you know extra props for having a really good celebrity match. So all in all, I. I give it more points for that as well. But that wraps up our WrestleMania reviews for the year, man. Uh, I liked them all. They were uh, they were fun to do. I always like this month when we get to look back at WrestleManias of the past. But next week, we're officially diving into April. And on April 6th, it is WCW Spring Stampede 1997. And I know you watched this one back already. Uh, did you? Uh, was was this uh, a standout one? Or I love this one. Yep. It's got a really random yeah, not... how main event, but I loved it. Most of 1997 was really good in both companies. So um, it, you and I both said it's one of our favorite years in pro wrestling. So looking forward to going back and watching this one. And uh, we'll definitely talk more about that next week. Uh, between this show and next show, you're going to be in Dallas for WrestleMania. So I hope you oh, enjoy yes. yourself. Have fun. Waiting, waiting and, a long time to go back. Yeah. And everybody keep up with us on social media for more on that and YouTube and all that. We'll talk about it and have updates. Specifically, if you guys can go check out uh, the new top 10 greatest WrestleMania main events video I just posted. It's going to be in two parts. The first one dropped yesterday on our YouTube. It's uh, youtube.com forward slash C forward slash main event marks podcast. Check that out. Part one is up there. It is numbers 10 through 6. Part two is going to post hopefully by tomorrow, Friday at the absolute latest, and that's going to be numbers 5 through 1. I had a lot of fun making these videos, and uh, I hope you have a lot of fun watching them. But yeah, go check that out on our YouTube, and subscribe, like the videos, and uh, comment with your opinions on there, as well as check out all the other exclusive content we got on our YouTube channel at youtube.com forward slash C forward slash main event marks podcast. And thank you for joining me today, Greg. Mm-hmm. We'll see you all next week at WCW Spring Stampede 1997.